I know, I know, this video has long been overdue. Sorry. Since I posted my digital note-taking system, I have been receiving tons and tons of emails and messages asking how to use my note-taking template in Google Docs. Genuine mistake on my part, I honestly didn't know how many people would be unfamiliar with using Google Docs as a note-taking tool and truthfully, I haven't had the opportunity to make a thorough guide on how to do so because the past semester was just crazy. So I made a post about it on my channel, I posted a story about it on my Instagram and I even commented on that video just so I can detail the instructions on how to use my template but I think this matter still needs some clarifying. So today, finally, I am going to break down my entire digital note-taking process into a step-by-step -step guide that hopefully can help you take effective notes. <laughs> Okay, my note-taking process usually runs through three phases, recording, building, and reviewing. If you haven't watched the first part of my digital note-taking system, I highly suggest you do so because that is where I discuss the tools and format that I use as well as what I do in each phases. But to briefly recap, recording is when I dump all my lecture notes, building is when I add important information from textbooks, journal articles, and online resources, and reviewing is when I review all my bullet point notes, deleting those that are redundant, expounding on those that need some more clarifying, and overall just organizing to my format. So during phase one, which is recording, I usually already have my template all set up before I even write my lecture notes. I will have the template link below so you don't have to make everything from scratch, but when you open up my template, it's still grayscale, still quite empty, still different from what I use, and that's because you still need to format the template to your liking. You don't need the request and access to edit the template template. Again, you don't need to click on the request edit access button because this will change and edit the template for everyone. Essentially, this will override the template for everyone. So to edit this template, all you need to do is click on file, make a copy, make sure you rename your file as you're doing so, and then select a folder in your own Google Drive where you want to place your notes. This ensures that only you can access the file and other people will not be able to access nor edit your file. Once you have your own copy, you can now start editing. The first thing that I usually do is I double click on the header, I add our school logo, I edit the lesson number and title as well as the semester, academic year, professor's name, and the course code. I then change the color of my template to my desired color scheme which I usually find on Pinterest and to do so you can click on this button and you can either choose from one of the pre-made colors that they have or add your own by changing this color code right here. Now to change the colors of the borders, you can simply click on the shift key, click on these borders, click on this button right here, and same thing as before, choose your desired color. Now before I talk about how to edit the main portion of your notes, let's first talk about editing the footer. Similar to the header, all you have to do is double click on the footer, Edit the course code and title, lesson number and title, and change the color to your desired color scheme. Once you're done formatting your headers and footers, let's proceed to the main text. Now in my last video, I talked about how I arrange my notes into a hierarchy such that important points stand out while less important points recede. In writing my notes, I want to make sure that I understand the relationships among the concepts. By just simply looking at my notes, I want to see and understand that concept B is under concept A, while concept C is completely different from concepts A and B. I also implement that principle in my headings. So when you click on view, show outline, it will basically show you the headings organized into a logical hierarchical order. So in my template, there are three headings, one for the primary, secondary, and tertiary headings. I've already formatted these headings in such a way that if you copy them, they will automatically organize in your outline so you don't have to worry about that anymore. All you have to do, again, is to format these headings to your your notes color scheme and you can do that by clicking this button again right here. Now if you want to make another primary, secondary, or tertiary heading, you can just simply select copy and then paste to your document. Now the way that I organize my notes is I usually have one document per lesson. I do this because one lesson for me may reach 10 to 15 pages. Sounds like a lot, really 
is a lot. And so if I compile all my notes for all my lessons for just one course in the entire semester, one document may reach 60 to 70 pages or more. That would make finding concepts in important terms way more difficult for me. So to avoid that, I usually make one document per lesson. So let's say I made this format for lesson one and I want to make a new document with the same format for lesson two. I don't have to start from the beginning. I don't have to go back to zero. I can just simply click on file, make a copy to duplicate my already made template. Of course, if you want to make a new format with a different color scheme for, let's say, a different course, you would have to start from the beginning. But if you want to use the same format, then you can just simply duplicate the file. Now, what if you want to compile all your notes for all your lessons in one document? Can you change the headers and footers to distinguish which notes are for which lesson and where the start and end of each lesson are, you definitely can. So let's say you've already written your notes for lesson one and you want to use the same file for lesson two. All you have to do is simply click on insert, break, and section break. This will create a new section where you can write your notes for lesson two. To change the lesson number and title, you just have to double click on the header, select all, copy, make sure that link to previews is unchecked, Paste the header and now you can change the lesson number and title without having to worry about changing the header of lesson one. The same process also applies when you're changing the footers for each lesson. And that is the entire process of how I set up my template. This may seem tiring and overwhelming at first glance, but these are the high maintenance things I do to make my note-taking process low maintenance, as TikTok would put it. When I have a template, it's much easier to organize, write, and understand all my notes. So once I have formatted my template to my liking, I can now start writing my lecture notes. My note-taking method itself is in no way special. I just simply use bullet points and indent when writing supporting details. Again, during phase one, the goal is just to record all important concepts and key points during the lecture so you don't end up missing out on anything that may come up during the exams. Now, during phase two, which is building, I add supporting information that I deem important from textbooks, online resources, and journal articles. These may be examples, information that explain complex concepts, and just any information that may help in understanding the important points during the lecture. Now what follows is just my preference. You don't have to follow this, but when I incorporate information from references other than the lecture, I want to distinguish which is which. When I see my notes, I want to know which information was from the lecture, which was taken from the textbook, and so on and so forth. There are two ways by which you can do that. First, you can double click on the specific bullet, right click, more bullets, then change the bullet to an emoji or a symbol of your choice. So if you have an information from a textbook, you can use the book emoji as your bullet. If you have an information that you searched online, maybe you can use the magnifying glass emoji as your bullet. Totally up to you. The second way is much simpler. You can just change the color of the entire text in that specific bullet. You may use the former, you may use the latter, or you may simply not. I tend to switch back and forth between these two depending on my mood so totally up to you this is just my preference and what works for me in case i want to add figures and diagrams to supplement my notes i usually wrap my text around them just so i can save space so once i've added the figure i usually resize first so it doesn't take up so much space on my notes i don't print my notes anyway so i don't need to make sure that the figures are well seen i can just zoom in anyway after that i click on image options text wrapping i choose wrap text and then i reposition the figure to wherever I want. Now, once I've made sure that my notes are more or less complete, I move on to phase three, which is reviewing. Reviewing in this case doesn't mean actively recalling your notes. Reviewing just basically means I'm formatting and organizing my notes after I've written a rough draft. So after a day or two, I go through my notes, I delete any that are repetitive, I change the colors of the key terms and concepts according to my color scheme, and I organize the order and relationships between each bullet point. So that is how I use my template for taking notes. 
Now, I don't just use Google Docs for taking notes in and out of class. I also use Google Docs for collaborating with my classmates, writing papers, answering worksheets, drafting emails, the list goes on. So as an avid Google Docs user, I think I found a few features that maybe most people may be unfamiliar with, but that have made writing, editing, and organizing for me much easier. First up, outlines and tables of content. In my How I Prep for a New Semester video, I briefly mentioned why I transitioned from using Microsoft Word to Google Google Docs and one of the reasons being the outline feature in Google Docs. Again, some of my notes may reach or even exceed 10 to 15 pages. Sounds exage, sounds OA, but I want my notes to be a synthesis of all my learnings from the lecture, the textbook, and from other references. So when I'm studying, I want to be looking at just my notes. I don't want to feel the need to look at other references anymore. I feel like this saves me time and energy instead of having to spend a few more minutes in every review session trying to look for the same concept in other references. And in the future, in case I want to look back at a specific lesson for my notes, I can find all the important and relevant information that I need in one place. Of course, you don't have to do that. This is just what has worked for me. But two things that have made lengthy notes much easier for me to understand, outlines and tables of content. So in my template, again, the headings are already automatically organized into primary, secondary, and tertiary headings. So when you click on view, show outline, it will show you all the main headings, subheadings organized into a logical order. So if in case I want to look at a concept under diversity and other distinctive chemotrophic bacteria, I can easily do so without having to scroll through 19 pages worth of notes. If you want to include this outline into your notes, you can do so by making a table of contents and you can make one by clicking on insert table of contents. When you have this table, you can simply click on the headings in case you need to navigate through your notes. But for me, I much prefer using the outline feature just so I can save the space for my actual notes. Another way to easily navigate through your notes is by using bookmarks. Bookmarks allow you to link portions of your notes so you can easily reference or jump back to them if needed. And how do I do that? Let's take my human by notes as an example. So I see P wave being mentioned at the start of my notes. I can just select on the word P wave and insert a bookmark. On the next mention of P wave, I can just right click, insert link, go to headings and bookmarks, and then find your bookmark for P wave. So every time I click on P wave, I am redirected back to my first mention of P wave. Another feature that has made note taking for me much easier in Google Docs is voice typing. If I am watching an online lecture, it usually takes me twice the duration of the video to finish my notes because usually I digest the information first while watching the video, pause, take notes, play it back again, pause, take notes. It just takes up so much of my time. So with voice typing, which you can find on tools, you can simply sit back, let the video play, and let Google Docs take notes for you. Next one, building blocks. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is a relatively new feature. Well, at least for me, I just recently discovered it. But building blocks essentially creates template blocks that you can use across all your documents. So remember my earlier template when I still have this grayscale format? I can click on insert building blocks custom building blocks select my headings and then save it as a custom building block so if i open a new document i can just click on insert building blocks custom building blocks headings and I have all my headings without having to worry about setting up the format from scratch. You can also do this for your e-signatures in case you need to sign documents using Google Docs. Okay, last feature, drop downs. I am a fan of drop down buttons. It keeps track of progress. It makes assigning tasks much more convenient. There are so many ways to use it. Any button that is designed for organizing, best believe I love it. But usually I don't use drop down in Google Docs for taking notes. I use it when I'm collaborating with my classmates and answering group works or worksheets. So when you're answering a group work, you're usually working on it on separate times, whichever time is more convenient for each member of the group. So to keep track of our progress, I usually make this table, I add our names, and I add a drop down button beside each name, which indicates each of our statuses. To make one, you just have to click on insert, new drop down, customize the choices. I usually add not started, in progress, and completed, and 
there you have a drop down button to keep track of your progress. If in case you want to use this for your notes, you can maybe use it as a review tracker. Same thing, not started, in progress, and completed. Okay, so that is the entire process of how I take my notes using my template as well as a few tips and tricks in using Google Docs. Again, I am so, so sorry this took so long. Thank you so, so much for sticking around and I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!